Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless is Thursday, February 8, 2024. Phyllis irritates Danny, Nikki requests that Victor honor her wishes, and Devin confronts Daniel. Devin asks Daniel if he's told Lily about him and Heather when they meet into each other at Crimson Lights. Daniel is holding off until Lily has reached a more stable emotional state. Devin queries whether the intention is to continue deceiving her till that point. Daniel claims that he put things on hold with Heather. Every time Devin speaks with Lily, he continues to lie to her. Devin calls this out. If Devin feels she is ready, Daniel will take off for California immediately. Devin's look indicates that she isn't. Daniel informs him that Lily requires their help. He will continue to listen if he can. Devin warns him that by saying, I am also keeping your secret, he has put himself in a very awkward situation. Lucy asks Heather whether she anticipates moving in soon when she's at Daniel's house. Heather reminds her that until her dad tells Lily, this is being handled covertly. Lucy finds it difficult to conceal. Heather is thrilled and acknowledges that it's exciting. Lucy thinks they could jump to the happy ending and resume their family life. What if things change before Dad tells Lily? Or what if Dad decides he wants to stay with her when they see each other? Is her concern. Daughter is reassured by Heather, who also pleads for patience. We must allow your dad to handle things as he sees fit. Lucy will comply because she doesn't want to screw this up. They make the decision to go to Crimson Lights. Lucy welcomes Danny in and asks him to come along, but he must decline. If he's okay, Heather asks. Danny says he's having trouble understanding some lyrics, so they walk away. As Phyllis enters the GCAC, she runs into Diane. Diane gives her the compliment that she looks beautiful. Phyllis shares that she's been told by several that she has a unique shine lately. Diane is running late for work, but she would be delighted to hear about it. I'm running Jebot, she declares, announcing her recent promotion. Everything. Beside my hubby at his side. Phyllis observes that she is exactly where she intended to be when she returned from the afterlife. Diane refutes any plotting. She begged Jack to put Kyle back on the job, but he insisted that she stay. She makes fun of Phyllis for losing her radiance. According to Phyllis, it hasn't. She has someone in her life who actually cares about her, which is a far nicer feeling than having one's spouse take advantage of them. Jack and Victor walk into the dive bar and find Nikki unconscious on a table. When Victor gently wakes her, she recognizes Jack. With her eyes narrowed, she sneers, No, no, no. How did you act? Victor claims that she was not harmed by anyone. He was aware of her presence. Nikki tells Jack that this is all his fault and sobs after being unconvinced. Victor assists her in getting up from her chair, and the men lead her out the door. Jack goes straight over to pour a scotch after entering the Abbott residence. He has a flashback of him and Victor arguing about Nikki's drinking in the past. Diane enters beaming and describes her absurd encounter with Phyllis. Jack claims he had to let Victor know he is Nikki's sponsor when she notices he is uncomfortable. He felt bad about it and fears that she no longer trusts him. Diane wants to know what went wrong. Victor and Jack, according to Jack, just hold her out of a dive pub. He fears that she will now push him away. Diane queries Victor's response. Jack claims that although he blushed, he appeared to accept him as her sponsor once he had cooled down. Diane queries Jack on if he will allow it to go on. Jack gets upset and furious that Victor isn't able to dismiss him. This surpasses Victor in size. This time, he doesn't get to make the decisions. Daniel apologizes to Devon at Crimson Lights for putting her in a terrible situation, but he says he still plans to be friends with Lily and will do everything in his power to help her out at this time. Devon inquires as to Heather's thoughts on postponing the affair. Daniel asserts that she doesn't want to harm Lily and that she is aware of how difficult this is. Davin scoffs, saying that her behavior after Lily left town tells him how much she likes her. He is asked by Daniel not to involve Heather in this. 
Devin questions whether he's attempting to play the hero by sticking up for his former while secretly having an affair with Lily. When Lily learns what he's doing and how long he's been doing it for, what type of hero will she believe he is? Because they collaborate, it's even more intricate. Daniel assumes they'll need to work out a polite solution. He's simply trying to figure out how to do the right thing by everyone. He didn't mean for this to happen. Devon continues to believe Lily deserves more. Daniel concurs. But tell me the truth. Are you truly in a position right now to stand and make judgments? While he was still dating Amanda, Daniel was aware of the events between Devon and Abby. It can get messy, he knows. Did you intend to harm Amanda? No, of course not, Devon snorts. Daniel notes that he believes that he is finally at home with Abby and Dom. Devon doesn't want to see his sister suffer after everything she has gone through, even though he is aware of what he is trying to say. Daniel is adamant that he only wants the best for her. If this is accurate, Devon queries, then what happened? Victor calls the bar patrons to get them to stop serving her and threatens to close the establishment if they do so in the back of his automobile. When Nikki awakens, she moans, I'm a mess. To Victor, she seems gorgeous. Nikki detests him for letting her see her like way. Why did he go to the pub with Jack, she wonders. He told him he is her sponsor, according to Victor. Why she withheld it from him is beyond him. Nikki has to accomplish this on her own with the assistance of a sponsor and someone who is aware of her situation because she doesn't want to be a burden. Victor does not want Jack to take on a central role in their relationship. Nikki contends that Jack is more informed about AA. Please don't try to take this from me, darling. Victor hears Nikki saying she's not ready to go home. They should go meet Jack when she finishes her meal. Victor is annoyed that Jack essentially allowed her to have alcohol Nikki disputes this and says she wants to go tell him that Victor is cool with him sponsoring her. He has to give her the freedom to fight it out if he wants to assist. Victor reluctantly consents to visit Jack, but assures him that he won't think twice about giving him peace of mind. Daniel tells Devon in Crimson Lights that he envisions a future with Heather. It's perfect. He is aware of his good fortune and vows never to take it for granted. Davin says he won't lie if Lily asks him directly, but he assumes he has to do what needs to be done. Devin leaves, and Heather and Lucy arrive. Lucy lets it slip that Danny seems distressed, and Daniel feels compelled to follow up with him. Daniel tells Heather about his talk with Devin as Lucy leaves. She wishes Daniel would tell Lily as soon as possible. See you back at the apartment, Daniel responds. Heather is joined by Lucy, and they celebrate their reunion as a family. When Phyllis sees them, she queries Daniel's whereabouts. Something was bothering Danny, according to Heather, who says he went to check on his dad. Jack expects to be held accountable at the Abbott estate, but Diane is adamant that Nikki's drinking is not his responsibility. This is a war Jack won't let her lose. I'm going to give her everything I have. Diane looks at this with raised eyebrows, Diane answers the door when the doorbell rings and lets Nikki and Victor in. Jack expresses surprise, saying he assumed Victor was bringing Nick to the property. Nikki says she came up with the idea to go there. Victor tells Jack that they weren't finished. He assumes Diane is aware of the situation. Diane hopes Nikki gets through this and promises to preserve her privacy. Jack informs Nikki that he knows she's upset because he told Victor that he is her sponsor after she left for the office. Nikki was initially perplexed, but she now gets it. It was her idea, Nikki explains Victor, to keep it a secret from him. She only wanted to heal without adding to his suffering because she knew he would be upset. Victor gives off the impression that he would go to any lengths for her. Daniel discovers Danny in the apartment, struggling to write a song. He is aware that something is off with him. What's going on? According to Danny, romance is a hassle. Not only is Christine involved, but Phyllis as well. He tells him what happened when Christine saw him kiss Phyllis. Daniel is horrified and wonders how he allowed that to occur. By now, doesn't he know his mother better than that? Danny claims not to be assisting. After apologizing, Daniel queries what he will do. Danny is going to pull away from them both, they won't turn away from one another if he doesn't back down. 
it appears more chaotic than it has ever been. Danny maintains that he owes Phyllis nothing, even when Daniel reminds him of this. Daniel understands Christine's unease in this situation. Danny intends to use music as a diversion. Daniel has experienced having everything thrown off. Danny assumes that they have stopped discussing him. Heather and I are back together, sighs Daniel. Does Lily already know, asks Danny. Daniel is holding off on telling her in person. He and Heather will remain silent for the time being. Danny queries Lucy's knowledge. Daniel chuckles. He sincerely hopes he can keep it to himself, and she does too. Danny doesn't find it entirely unexpected. He is in love with Heather. Daniel is amazed that she still loves him. I must inform Lily. He is killed at the prospect of injuring her. Danny assures his son that he is a kind man and will find the right words. Any suggestions for Dad here? Buckle up, buttercup, Daniel grins. Daniel answers the doorbell and lets Phyllis in. When Phyllis informs Danny that she just saw his daughters at Crimson Lights and that they could go to dinner since they're out and about, Danny turns around and lets out an irate breath. Lily calls, and Daniel goes outside to answer it. I miss you too, he says, inquiring about Matty's well-being. Danny approaches Phyllis in his flat and asks her why she is there. She arrived to invite their kid to supper. Danny notes that they decided to back off. When Phyllis found out, he was in love with her. As a friend, a stunned Danny says, Phyllis does not accept it. I know I'm a wild card, she says him, grinning as she takes off her coat. They've been able to converse and laugh because she shares what's on her mind and heart, but it means so lot to her. That lifts my spirits. It is really important to me. She just feels so good about him, even though she knows she tends to overreact. Danny gripes about her antics. This is about you and me, Phyllis says. Danny tries to explain to her that you and me don't exist. Phyllis has made mistakes that she regrets, but perhaps if he gave her a chance, he would see that she could provide him with something he didn't even realize he was lacking. She hears Danny say, this is not going to happen. If he tries, Phyllis believes it might work. Declaring he must get to the studio, Daniel enters from the hallway. Daniel queries her as he leaves. Are you happy? He says his dad is in a difficult situation because of his mother. Phyllis gripes that Christine constantly putting herself in their way is the sole reason it's not occurring. Maybe we're kismet, just like Heather and you. She knows Danny will notice it. Danny smiles when he suddenly bumps into Christine in the hallway. Nikki is unwilling to alter her arrangement at the Abbott residence, but Victor believes that her AA group may have some members who may serve as her sponsors. How come Jack has to be the guy? Nikki explains. For Victor, it's been worse because of Jack. He complains bitterly that he lured him out of the dive bar even though he knew she was intoxicated. Nikki summarizes how a lady who might still pose a threat stole her sobriety. Though she works hard to regain it, there are days when she just feels too much. She needs to have confidence in her sponsor. I've trusted Jack for years. She begs Victor to realize that Jack is the only person she will accept. He'll have to concede that she has a final say. Victor will follow it even though he disagrees. Jack, let me tell you one thing. You will pay a price in hell if something were to happen to Nikki. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.